anyone think why Newton believed as he did? Well, a wave needs something to push against, does it not? That's what makes it a wave. But what is there to push against in a vacuum? Therefore, the vacuum must contain a massless, invisible substance, an ether, if you will. Mr. Gillies and Mr. Perry, you've been reading ahead, haven't you? No, it's only logical. Common sense dictates it. <laughs> However they came to it, Mr. Perry and Mr. Gillies are correct. Detective James Gillies. Robert Perry. We were students of Professor Bennett's. We couldn't help but overhear your conversation. Professor Godfrey is a prickly one. However, like all of us, he is terribly upset by Professor Bennett's death. No doubt. Nevertheless, you were just doing your job, and Godfrey should have understood that. Justice requires cooperation. Please tell me you're not going to start quoting Locke again. Gentlemen, I appreciate your vote of confidence, and I will do my best to apprehend Professor Bennett's killer. Well, we appreciate that, but there's something else that you should know. Um, they weren't exactly friends. No, I know. They clashed on occasion. Well, it was worse than that. Professor Godfrey was still bitter. Bitter? What about? Well, he was passed over for department head. In favor of Bennett. He was recruited from England, you know. Godfrey was still upset. Apparently, the Board of Governors wasn't ready to appoint a Canadian to head up such a complex science. Interesting. Thank you, gentlemen. You've been most helpful. Well, good luck with your investigation. It still doesn't explain why no one saw the actual shooting. Ah, Mr. Perry, Mr. Gillies. Detective Murdoch. How goes your investigation? Proceeds apace. Can we help you with something? Yes, one small question. You mentioned that Professor Godfrey did not like Professor Bennett, but how did your fellow classmates feel about him? Oh, everyone loved the professor. His mind was second to none, and he was witty. Yeah, it was everything that blowhard Godfrey couldn't be. I see, I see. Well, thank you very much. Detective? May we be allowed to observe your investigation? Observe? Uh, quite dull, I should think. Actually, it might prove an interesting exercise in applied physics. Oh, what do you think, sir? Show these young toughs how things are done outside the schoolyard? Something we never see. The classroom is so theoretical. Oh, can't see the harm. Why not? Right, Professor Bennett was here at his telescope looking up at the night sky. Ready when you are, sir? Right then, George. Come forward several paces. A little further. Now right? No, you're right. Oh, sorry, sir. I assumed you meant you're right. I see. So you're determining the trajectory of the bullet. And by defining two points on the line, you determine all others. Very Euclidean. Indeed. In fact, this is the very method the Romans first used to build straight roads back in 43 AD. Fascinating. Extremely. That's the spot. So the top of the stick represents the rifle's barrel. That's right. But if he was kneeling. Or if he was a dwarf. If, if you took it back a bit further to about here. We have one, you know. A dwarf. He's in the arts program. I have a thought. What if we took the line further back to the cobblestone? Here. Theoretically, yes, but the killer would never be all the way down on the ground. Unless the professor was killed by a reflected bullet. You're a genius, Robert Perry. Again, in theory, surely the killer would simply face him and shoot him square on. Good point. You're an idiot, Robert Perry. Oh, hardly. We're simply applying practical physics. And it got us nowhere. On the contrary. What have you there? Either our phantom shooter has transformed himself into sand or left us a valuable clue. Don't deny writing this note, Mr. Perry. It was just a prank. A prank? Well, we all knew the professor liked to watch the girls, so we thought we'd have some fun with him. Fun? And do you think it was fun that you specified Miss Birchill remove her clothing at precisely the moment that Professor Bennett was shot? That, that's a coincidence. A coincidence? That's a rather spectacular one, you'd have to agree. Well, the meaning of coincidence is utterly subjective and can be evaluated only by the person experiencing it. And where were you the night of Professor Bennett's murder? Uh, at the pub. You're quite sure? 
Yes, that's right. Can anyone substantiate this? Uh, Gillies. He was with me. Uh, there were others there, too. And what was your relationship like with the deceased? You can't think I had something to do with his death. Answer the question, Mr. Perry. Uh, I admired him. It was a privilege to study under him. And where were you the night before the murder? Uh, studying. Alone? With Gillies. Of course. I believe if there's nothing more, I, I should be allowed to go now. It's for now, Mr. Perry. For now. Just good pals, or something more? I'd say they're hiding something. Agreed. And Godfrey? The letter all but rules him out as a suspect. But if it is them, what's their motive? I thought they liked the victim. That was my understanding as well. How did Mr. Perry strike you? Nervous. Like he was trying to remember his story. And Mr. Gillies? <laughs> like a bloody iceberg. Then I suggest one way to solve this case is by focusing our efforts on Mr. Perry. And breaking with what? We've got no hard evidence, and his daddy's barristers are probably en route as we speak. Applied physics. Even a planet can be moved with the proper leverage. I just have to find it.